We truly do need him. <clears throat> when God gave me the idea for the message the other day, I was looking, I didn't have this made up, but something similar, some of the same scriptures are came out of an old message I had pre not even preached. I had prepared in one of my many little notebooks that Lord had given me to put together many years ago. So there could be about three different titles to this message. You can say it's doing right by God and he will do right by you. Or do and receive. Or the one I was thinking this week was you take one step towards him and he'll take two towards you. It is so true that he will take over and do what we're needed in our lives. We learn through life that there's many consequences for the things that we do. You do one thing, and that's one thing I teach or tell to kids in a prison, that you're here because you're paying the consequences for doing something. So there's a reaction to something. Uh, and, and in science, remember the term that uh, I had to ask Kenneth to help me remember this, been too many years from, since science class. For every action, there is an equal or opposite reaction. For every action. And this is what he suggested, and I thought, yeah, this is a good example. So I found it. Remember on uh, many times on office desk, you'll find these swinging balls. You swing one ball, the opposite one on the other side will swing. It just reacts and keeps swinging. There's an act, every time we do something, there's a reaction to it. Some, there is a result to something we do. So we need to be careful what we do. And, well, how, and also, you know, in science, many kids always, and we still do that just for the heck of it and fun of it, ha, put the vinegar and soda together. To, <laughs> they use that product and many times when they made the, the volcanoes in sciences class, but it, it, there was a reaction. You, by putting two elements or put doing something, then there becomes a reaction to it. And many times they'll say, if you take care of me, I'll take care of you. So there's a reaction. You, do, you, help, you watch my back and I'll watch your back. So there's a reaction. There is... For whatever uh, thing we do in life, and we, however we uh, work things out and try to, in our relationships, there's always something will happen by what we do, what we say. I hadn't, didn't have that particular in the message, but because of what we say, we can cause things to either happen good or bad. We can actually speak it, and that's another message. I don't want to get into it, too much of that. That is a strong message. And God will take care of us. And God will also, Kenneth, you want to come, will also show us, this is a, what that title is. He's going to pretend he's God. You know, because if we take one step toward him, And then we'll finally meet, see? And we'll stop and meet and walk together. Thank you. So we have to walk with God. You know, you have to go towards God, not away from God. He can't come to you if you're going away from him. So we've got to go towards God. And remember, I have recently preached the message, Are You Listening? Have you learned? And what the, in that... The, about listening is when you are listening, you're not only hearing what is said about, but will absorb, understand, and apply what you heard. So I want you to listen and hear and absorb and actually apply what you hear today because it's going to help you. God is telling us that we, if we do right, he can do something for us, sometimes even greater than we could ever expect. But we need to make sure we're doing the right things. All right, the following scriptures, and also the other thing uh, is another 
picture that I, came to my mind. Remember the poem that footprints in the sand? That we try, we do what we can. We walk a little ways until we get tired or until we can't. But Jesus takes over from there. When you don't see the second set of footprints, the poem says that he, it is when Jesus is carrying us. Think about it. If you're not going towards God, he can't pick you up and carry you when you're going through something. So we need to have that reaction. We need to, and this scripture I had recently, Exodus 15, 26, in one of the messages recently, but it bears repeating. It's so much information in here. And he said, if you will give earnest heed, because we were talking about the listening then, to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians for I the Lord am your healer. He was talking about healing but he was talking about a lot their blessing. If you do what I tell you. If the reaction. If you do what... My word says, what my commandment says, then I can do, do, follow through and give you the results of you doing what is said. See, unless you do something, how can you get a result out of anything if you're not actually doing anything? You can't just sit there and expect food to be put on the table if you don't do the cooking. So you have to do something and then the reaction of it, and then you have something to work with. You have to work for it. Do something. We hear some of these scriptures preached so many times with a lot of different pastors, and they preach about the blessings. They preach about you can have the blessings. God, the scripture is true. That part of it is true. You can have the blessings. You can have all the things of God. You can have what God will do for you. But... Every scripture that there's a blessing, he says, I'll bless you, I'll do this, I'll do this, if, but, and, if you do what I tell you. And this whole chapter, and I'm only going to read a couple of scriptures, this is a whole chapter of uh, 60-some verses on the blessings and the cursings. If you do one, if you do this, the first 14 is about this, but we'll just read the first two verses to show you what it means. It's saying, now, now it shall be if you diligently obey, if, notice that if again, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful, you have to be careful. Sometimes we get in the way and don't do what God is asking us. We think we are and we mess up. Because we hear God tell us to do something, but we're not doing it the way he wants us to do it. Then we mess up. He says, do it diligently, obey my... Diligent means with all your might, with all your power, with all your love. Because you love the Lord, you're going to do everything right. You're going to do it right. You're going to do it the way he said. The instructions he actually wrote down in his word, you're going to do it that way. Obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments, which I command you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. He gives you promotion. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. He says, if you obey, and then he says, well, this is going to happen, but he repeats himself. Yeah, I said if you'd obey. So if we obey him, he'll set us high above. The first 14 verses of this chapter is talking about the different blessings that will come. If you obey, if you do all my statutes, if you uh, do everything I ask of you and command you. And that's not just some of these things. Like a lot of churches teach that uh, 
Old Testament statutes, what was written in the Old Testament is no longer valid. But it is, except for the sacrificial laws. Because if you didn't obey the health laws, you would get sick. He says, if you obey my statutes, you won't get sick. If you obey the eating laws, then the diseases won't come upon you. Which scientists and doctors are finding out, if you'd obeyed him in the first place, we wouldn't have all the different cancers and diabetes and all these diseases in the world. But if we obey him, he will give us a promotion. When you go out amongst the world, notice the Israelites, when they were living for the Lord, they went out in, uh, amongst their enemies, they went out and done their jobs, and they their enemy literally feared them. They were thought them something different and highly to be rare. Think about it today, Israel, even though they're the smallest country in the world, and every country in the world is against them, but yet they can't defeat them. But they live, you got to obey God's commandment. We will be promotion. There will be something about us. They, a lot of people may not see it at first. But there's something, God sees you better than the other person. There's one time God gave me a vision that he had set me up on a, pedi- up on a big tall tower of a hill for this town to do the job he's given me. I, it's not me that I don't care where I stand as long as I obey God. That's my thought. But God will give you promotion. He gives the one that gives you promotions if you obey him. If you do everything he says. Whoops. <laughs> uh, but, um, go away. but notice, when you do obey him, you will walk in blessings. Blessings will come upon you. Not only get blessed, you not only have everything you need and have, uh, be able to go forth and, and be happy and have health and all the things he's promised. You have to read the, all the Old Testament and Deuteronomy, several scriptures in Deuteronomy and Exodus and different ones that talk about the promises that he gave Israel if you obey. I can only give you a couple of them here. But these blessings will come upon you and notice this term, overtake you. You will literally walk into blessings to where you'll have more than abundance. What does Jesus say uh, there in the New Testament? Say, I have come to give you life and life abundantly, more abundantly. More stuff, being more happy, more peace, more joy, more everything that we need. And it seems like lately with uh, uh, Kenneth and I, I know we walked in blessings for many years and tried to be obedient and do everything this, the scripture says to do because we got to set examples. But I know since we're really obeying God in this ministry, and it might be kind of a struggle here and we're get, struggle getting started and stuff. But the blessings are overtaking us. Food is coming in in abundance. More, I have test. I testified to somebody at Walmart. I think it was the other day that I said I don't need to buy anything. I don't buy a lot of meat anyway. And what I do get given to me. I don't buy and once in a while buy a sa- lettuce or salad. But that's all. All my fruits and vegetables are given to me. I might buy some frozen vegetables, but that's about it. Our food budget this last months have been almost zil, nothing. 